Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. All right, I have made many videos on 5G home internet using Verizon, T-Mobile, third-party routers, AT&T, and I've also covered a lot of adding external antennas to get the best signal for your home internet. Now, this one is the Waveform 4x4 and it has been my main go-to person I've tested. In fact, I have five other ones up in my attic right now and I've done comparison videos. This one's always been the winner for me. But there is a new sheriff in town that's ready to take the throne. So let's whip that out and show you what it is. All right, so what I'm about to show you is two new products from Waveform. Really, I'd almost say it's like four or five new products uh, from Waveform. And they really have done a great job of answering different questions or complaints that people have had or ways to improve the antenna itself, the installation of it, or the ease of you getting the actual components that you need and not extra ones or not different ones. So the first thing I'm going to show you here is the brand new Quad Mini. I'm also going to show you the Quad Pro antenna. I'm going to show you their cabling, their different um, mounting solution that they have brand new now, and different features here. All right, so this one here is the Quad Mini. So you can see it is a smaller antenna than most of the waveforms that you've seen before. But if you were to compare it to like the T-Mobile uh, 5G antenna that they sell for 100 bucks. Um, it is more than double the size. Listen, it's about three times the size of that one. This is $120 uh, before my discount. And this one is designed to either go on this stand here where you can route the cable to the little uh, back hole here and then it gets mounted and can go on a windowsill, can go on a desktop, so it can stay indoors if you like it to. Um, it also has uh, suction cups that will go uh, back here so you can put this on a window. It is omnidirectional, so it can kind of face uh, either way, and it's, it's going to be fairly uniform from the signal pickup. Or it's also fully outdoor rated, and so it can go outdoors. Now, you might want to say, well, that's one of my complaints is that it's hard to get outside of my house, either, or maybe I'm renting an apartment or a place and I can't uh, go through the wall. Well, they actually solve that with the kit as well. All right, so they have lots of, of uh, other components in the kit. My favorite one, of course, is the chocolate bars. I'm not sure if everyone gets a waveform chocolate or if that's just for the, uh, the launch activities that they're going through. But all these components, the one that is probably one of the coolest or the most useful for most people is this little cable kit here that is very spe specialized. It obviously has waveform logos on it. All this stuff is custom designed by Waveform out of California. And this one is designed to get you through a window. So this works with almost every type of window. It can be a slider window, a casement window, a double hung window, all that kind of stuff. Um, you should be able to get this to work. And you can see here just how thin uh, this silicone strip is where it's specialized cables. So um, this little block goes on the outside. And then you put this through the window. It has a couple ways to attach it. You have sticky pad here. You can also pop this open. And it has screw holes so you can screw in. Um, to your um, you know, window or your siding or wherever you're, you're putting this if you want to. And then you can even adjust this layout. So right now you can see this one is kind of a, a inline layout. You can actually pop this open and you can have these cables come out the side so that it does a 90 degree turn as well if you wanted it to. So that's really neat. And all this is weatherproof uh, to go outside. And then they give you this 10 foot, this one is a 10 foot cable, uh, but you can get 10 or 20 foot length cables um, with this one and these just screw into here and that's how you connect to your antenna and so this is what I'm going to test this is going to be drastically better as always with the antennas the best place to put them is outside um, you know anytime they go through any kind of walls or uh, shingles or trees uh, it typically hurts the signal so getting them um, outside is the best if you can make that happen and this certainly makes it a lot easier now all right, and then this bracket here is one that goes around a pole mount. So they do have a J mount, which is kind of standard in the industry. And these zip ties go around and secure that. And then your panel goes into this. So this is the same mounting interface as the, um, the desktop uh, one as well. And then the kit comes with the little uh, U.FL to SMA adapters. These are needed if you have uh, some of these gateways from the uh, ISPs like T-Mobile, Verizon. You had to take them apart. I have videos on that. And they need this little U.FL connector to snap onto the board so you can get out to a um, connector that you can attach an antenna to. So that's included in the kit. All right, so I have this guy fully out and apart here, but this is the uh, Waveform J mount. And this one is slightly redesigned. You can see it does have a, a grounding strap already attached to it. It has the Waveform logo on it. And then um, this just goes in here like this. And this gives you adjustability up and down to mount this onto different uh, places on your house, your siding, uh, or whatnot. 
And like I said, then that this bracket here then goes around and zip ties uh, to it at whatever angle you need for your best performance. So that's what the um, Waveform Quad Mini uh, kit includes. All right, so now for the big boy, this is the Quad Pro antenna. Okay, so here is the Quad Pro. All right, so the Quad Pro come to chocolates as well. It also has the U.FL connectors that you might need for um, attaching it to one of these stock gateways. This one is um, some cable ties. So if you need to tie up any of these cables, make it a neater job. It includes with that. That's the Velcro uh, cable ties. And here you can see this one is a 20-foot cable, and this one over here is a 10-foot. So this is a 30-foot kit. I think you can get um, maybe another 20 foot if you wanted with it. Uh, so you can kind of um, decide how many feet you need, 10, 20, or some combination of those um, two in there as well. So now I'll open this up and show you there are some important notes about the cabling as well to talk about. So now this one here is the jumper cable. Right, so note that I think all this new packaging has been actually I think a couple years now since I got my waveform original one there. But all this packaging is uh, recyclable and it says it's plant-based uh, and it's really nice looking. It's got a QR code, the help, uh, support, phone number, website, all that kind of stuff all built into it, which I think is great. And it really shows you that Waveform is a very customer-centric um, company. In fact, I'll get on a little bit of a rampage here with, you know, I've tested because I had some complaints from some viewers saying, hey, you, you haven't tested some other um, antennas. So I went out and bought a lot of them and I tested them and they did not show as well. I tried to reach out to some of them and it's very hard to get a hold of them. And there's many things that just were obviously not customer focused. Waveform just spent, you know, really over um, over a year to redesign this stuff based off the consumer needs. So that's what um, I really like about their stuff. I feel like they really do care about us and trying to get the best product uh, for us home users to get it done. So this is the same little cabling trick to get through a window that they have with their um, mini. Uh, so that's available here and then i do want to talk about this uh, cabling for a little bit because what you'll notice here is this cabling is very different than their old cabling you know i have their old cabling if you look at their specs oxy pull it up here on my uh, tablet in a minute here but these are a different cabling this is an ultra flex lmr 195 so this is actually um, a little bit if you look at the um, the rating, it's actually a little bit lower rating than their past black cabling, which was a RS240. So if you look at the specs on the signal loss, it is actually slightly higher um, on this new cable. But the benefit of this cable is that it's way more flexible. And then also it comes in this 10 foot length and then uh, the 20 foot length. So you can really customize exactly how long you need it and that is another big driver is the longer the cable is the more loss it has because the loss is really kind of a linear one by by foot of, of cabling so you know i think if you had a really long run that let's say you needed 50 feet of run um, i would probably consider talking to waveform and say hey i have this really long run um, is there cabling that i should consider to get if you have a 10 foot run our 20 foot run or even a 30 foot I think this is still a good way to go but we're gonna go test that out of course and and see how it performs so the uh, the cabling itself the material that is coated on on the other one is uh, PVC and this one is TPE all right so we'll look at some more specs there in just a second let's get this big antenna out here so and compare it here so this one has a little bit longer cable length than the other one, the other one has about a foot this one looks like it's closer to like two feet um, but it looks like on the back side it has a very similar attachment here but as you can tell from this unit both the front and the back of it are plastic and then it's screwed together this previous one the back side is aluminum it's screwed together but then it has a bead of silicone around the outside for the seal I'm assuming this one if I were to take it apart that there's probably a seal in between these two halves so um, you know at first glance it looks like it will probably be better sealed than the older one or at least um, the seal is not exposed out in, in the weather or bugs or birds or whatever else that could get to it. So from that standpoint, it um, it looks a little bit more robust. If I look at the size, though, uh, it's pretty much identical, I think, in size 
if I were to compare them, the biggest difference is this one looks a little bit nicer because it has a waveform logo, and then it has a little bit nicer uh, finish on it that doesn't show as many. This one, you know, that's not their fault, but I had this um, sliding down my asphalt roof at one point, so I have some scratches on the outside face of it, um, but it does show them a little bit uh, stronger there. So the other big thing, the other big thing is this one has the type in connectors on it the new one has the SMA smaller ones and then these gray pieces are the weatherproofing that you slide over the SMA connectors and right, I forgot this one last piece this is the uh, flex mount that they call it alright so this uh, flex mount is a really cool um, unit here because it uh, it does a few things one is it gives you the option to not use the pole mount at all because it has these large uh, holes that can be mounted directly to a flat surface like a wall an eave um, something like that and then this then allows you to bolt uh, directly up to the back side of the antenna and then it gives you a lot of adjustability here and then the kit actually comes with not only these big lag screws that you can put in this can even go into something like masonry they give you these um um these uh, anchors that allow you to go into stone or concrete uh, with them as well as wood or if you have a pole mount or you want to use a pole mount for whatever reason uh, it also has the u-bolts that go around it and that allows this to go onto uh, a pole mount as well now what's really neat with waveform is they are very uh, like i said customer focused here so they actually include tools here so you get a 17 millimeter wrench and you even get a 10 millimeter and it's actually a pivoting um, socket on one side and open and wrench on the other side and then they give you the Allen um, key that's needed to loosen up the uh, the mount so that you can articulate it. It has a couple different adjustments uh, with these two bolts. You can loosen them and then you can uh, make it go left and right. And then you can tilt it up and down as well with that. So um, lots of flexibility there with that mount. I guess it makes sense. It's called the flexi mount. Um, so that is very different than the old one. If you look at what came with it, it had the standard 90 degree angle bracket that um, you know did have some it has bolt holes so you can change that angle with it here but it was a little bit more cumbersome to um, set up and get place and then tighten it down while you have it angled correctly this one has a little bit more adjustability and you can have these um, screws like a little bit loose where you can move it but where it stays put when you let go of it so that is a improvement for sure on um, on this new unit so now let's look at a little bit of the specs of these different antennas and how they might change the performance of your signal. All right, so now I want to talk about the cabling and the signal loss that you get with it. So this is the new Ultraflex Quad. That's the, um, the marketing name for this one. And you can see it also calls it a Quad LMR195 cable. And the thing I want to focus on is really, um, I guess, a couple things. One is on the top right there. Under the materials, it shows you that the cable molding and cable jacket, which is the main, you know, um, you know, thing that you're touching on the outside of the cable, that white part. On this new one, it's TPE. On the old black one, it's a PVC. So I think that's part of the flexibility. And then obviously the the cabling itself inside is also maybe more flexible as well. But it just makes it easier to use, easier to bend and get around uh, places. And then next, the big thing is the RF attenuation. So this is really the amount of uh, signal loss you get per foot or in this case per 10 feet of uh, cabling so this one 10 foot cable if you look at it it gives you a loss but it's based off the signal uh, frequency so higher frequency has uh, more loss in the cabling than the lower frequency does and that's just the way that um, you know frequency and loss works works out so on here if i were to pick uh, t-mobile at 2500 megahertz uh, for N41, it's 1.9 dB of loss, and then we'll look at the actual antennas themselves and see how much gain they have. Um, and so you basically take the gain of the antenna at that frequency and then subtract out the loss, and that's your total net gain you get on that um, that system, which is important to note. So um, on Verizon, if you are on their C band there and you're trying to get they're, um, they're higher, what's that you call it, C-band, so it's mid-frequency stuff, you know, that's going to have a higher loss than a T-Mobile N71, which is down at 600 megahertz. So if I were to compare that, I have the other one pulled up on my computer for the old cabling. For that one, until I do a little bit of math here, because that one's a per 30 feet. 
so three times longer at uh, 600 megahertz is 1.8 db so it's double this one but the cable link is three times as long and i'm pretty sure it's pretty linear so that means this one does have more cable loss if i go back up to the 2500 megahertz for t-mobile n41 on this one it's 3.9 db for the old cable that's the rs240 cable so divide that one by three and what's that uh, 1.3 versus 1.9 db so in that case it's 0.6 db of loss difference uh, for this cable versus the other one so on shorter cable links doesn't really matter it's not a huge deal but if i look at a lot longer distance you know where you multiply that number out or if you look at the higher frequency like the 600 uh, megahertz for this one it's the 3 db of loss per 10 foot for the old cable it's 6.2 db for the 30 feet so that's what are about 2.1 so that's about 0.9 db difference there per 10 feet so that does add up over time it's something that you do, do need to pay attention to but i really do think that they have looked at this they've done the math they see how long of a cable most people need and they always encourage you to go as short as possible regardless of the cable type um, but we'll do some testing with this as well to see if I see a significant difference in that as well. Okay, but on that note, it is important to understand that every time you have something uh, added into your cabling system, it does affect the signal. So that's where this little um, window setup, they do have all the spec sheet. This is all available on their website through their stuff. And now this one's actually a little bit of a pre-release version, so there might it might be some more updates. Um, not necessarily changes to the values, but there might be more information uh, on their website even now if you look today and so you can see here that there is a loss associated with this one as well so that's something to consider um, that um, you know you you're going to introduce a loss whenever you you have any type of connection or cabling in there but it's really cool that they give you all this information they lay it out so you can go there and you look at things it has obviously some drawings so if you're really specific about where this is going to go or how you want to lay it out they actually have that information in here all right, so if we go back to the quad mini here, um, not only can you look at these different specs, you can see kind of at the top of it there, it tells you it works from the 600 megahertz to the 6,000 megahertz, four and 5G, of course. It says up to seven dBi gain there, indoor and outdoor rated. And then a little bit further down under the electrical, it does show you that um, they break down the gain based on frequency range. So just like the cables have a loss based off frequency, the antennas have a gain that varies based off what the frequency is that they're trying to receive. So you can see this one runs um, about 2.5 uh, dB down uh, low, and then it gets almost close to 6 or so at the higher frequency. So that is kind of nice that um, it has higher gain when the cable has um, more loss because they kind of um, you know balance each other out there. But now here we can look at the RF attenuation gain and the pattern that it has. So looking uh, down from the top of the unit there, we can see it is fairly circular. So all of these, you know, maybe it's a kindergartner drawing a circle, but it's fairly circular uh, pattern there, which tells you that it doesn't really, it should not matter exactly how that uh, mini is pointed or oriented. It should be pretty consistent. Uh, so that's a good thing about it. And then here you can look at the gain there by frequency so you can look at specifically like uh, you know the 2500 and you can see it's a little bit over uh, 5 dbi and then you can see at the very bottom or uh, the far left of the graph there that's about the 600 megahertz range so it is there a little bit under three but it shoots up very quickly uh, there uh, over five or even over six um, dbi gain all right so now this is for the quad pro the big guy and so you can see here also 4 and 5g support 600 to 6000 megahertz up to almost a 9 dBi gain, and it is outdoor rated, of course, like we mentioned. And you can see the same kind of summaries there that uh, down low it has around 5.5 dBi gain, but then it goes up to, you know, around 8 or so, all the way closer to the 6,000 uh, megahertz range. Um, you can get some more of the materials and information there um, about it, as well as kind of the wind rating, UV rating, all that kind of stuff, operating temps. But now if we look at the pattern there, for the RF um, signal that comes into it, you can see it is no longer uh, perfectly circular. It does have more of a directional where more of the front side of the unit where that W is pointing that way is going to be where you get your best gain. The back side of the antenna has less gain uh, to it and as well as the sides have um, less than the front as well. So that's something that's important to know that that one does take 
um, some more aiming to get correct and we'll talk about that in the future okay so here now looking at the gain you know the one that i'm going to care about most for t-mobile is this 2500 megahertz range so for that one it looks like i'm right around 8 dbi so i think that's pretty good all right but you can look um across this graph and see that's one thing i really like about um, waveforms that they give you this information on some of them some of the antenna suppliers it's hard to get um, this specific one they just give you like that information that it's eight or nine dbi gain but you, you don't know exactly where it's getting that uh, dbi gain it might not be applicable to you so do yourself a favor look at what bands you do get connected to look those up online at what frequency they are and then you can look at this chart and see for yourself and compare different antennas uh, fairly by looking at their gain for your specific signal that you're trying to improve and then the bottom of it, it gives you the dimensions as well, um, even with the um, flexi mount uh, attached on it um, as well. Okay, so I know that was a lot of information and there's a lot to learn here. I still have to do some more learning myself of um, getting these installed and set up. And of course, compared to um, the previous one as well as some of my other ones, I'm going to use these different gateways to test it. So I like to test um, uh, more than one gateway to give you an idea. That's going to take me uh, some time to do all that. I'm probably going to use something like my Invisigig here because it has the ability to search all the different carriers uh, and get their signal strength and information very quickly. So I can do that and get AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile all at once um, with um, that one unit. And then, of course, you're interested in a speed test. Though. So you want to say, hey, if I hook this up to my current uh, T-Mobile Sagemcom, and what am I going to see for a difference in speed? So I'll give that as well. Those are going to be new videos as they come out here. So please like my video here. Subscribe to my channel. Um, hit the bell icon to get notified. That really does help uh, the channel grow and supports it. So thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more of this coming soon.